broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Happy Independence Day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I got. I actually had a got a text today. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. Me too. So I was, I was actually pretty excited it was about a, that. It was a, the more you know from the Liberty Mike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really enjoyed that. Yeah. So. Um, for those of you that are scratching your heads or just wondering how we managed to put out a podcast on July 2nd if we were celebrating Independence Day, um, July 2nd is Independence Day, technically. Yeah. Uh, technically correct, which is the best kind of correct, right? <laughs> um, it was the day that uh, the Lee Resolution was passed, which is actually the, the legal document that separated um, the colonies from the uh, British government. Yeah. Um, British monarchy I, at the time. I yeah. uh, well, it still is, technically. Again. <laughs> Once again, um, technically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so today is actually the Independence Day. I had somebody at my office, I was talking about this at the office today, and um, and somebody asked me why it is that we celebrate the 4th instead of the 2nd then. Yeah. And uh, I said, I don't I don't know, you know, history is yeah. tricky. Uh <laughs> I said, I imagine that the main thing is that the um, the Declaration of Independence is just a far more powerful document yeah. um, than the Lee Resolution, which is like three sentences. Yeah. Um, and it essentially just says that we no longer recognize the sovereignty of the British crown over these colonies. That's, I mean, that's pretty yeah. much <laughs> what it is. The Declaration um, of Independence like lists the grievances and, yeah. and, and it's it a more powerful it, document. And it sets out the ideology yeah. of the of the country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was something I, I I can't say new because the ideas had been around for some time, but um, it certainly was novel in the sense of uh, of actually establishing a nation under that yeah. ideology. Absolutely. Um, and so, uh, you know. I thought we could just go through the declaration. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, so you had told me yesterday to read up on the Declaration of Independence. I did. So when I attempted to do so, like I have an app on my phone. Uh -huh. I've got like, I used to too, but yeah. uh, Apple didn't like it anymore. Well, yeah, the... so that's what I discovered when I went to open my app. I uh -huh. was like, oh, I'm going to open up the app. I've got the Constitution and the Declaration in mm -hmm. two different apps. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, it don't work. It was like, you've got to re-download. I was like, well, I absolutely want to re-download it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no, it's not supported by Apple. Yeah. So they took the Declaration of Independence <laughs> off my phone. I was pissed. Yeah. Well, the Constitution's still there, at least. It is. And I pulled mm -hmm. it up and, and kind of thumbed through it. And I was like, because I thought it, I was like, well, maybe the Declaration's actually in this app, too. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. But I'll, And it may have been if I had dug. I didn't dig that hard, though. Yeah. Um, I don't think it is. <laughs> I, I didn't. It, if you have the same app that I do, I, I, which knows? I'm pretty sure I probably do. I'm sure there's not like a dozen of these apps. So who knows? There's a, there's a few, I think. It is seems there? to me that when I downloaded them originally, there were a few. Well, I don't know, but they, the Apple took the declaration from me, and I'm pissed about it. Not all of them were free, though, for some reason. It seems like they should all be free. Well, I didn't but... understand why I had to update them. Like, it's a document. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. all it is. I could have screenshotted it and done just as well. Well, like... you, you could have used Safari. Yeah. Well, I mean, I did, obviously. <laughs> but I mean, it's not like I was just pissed about it. I felt like I had something taken from me. Yeah, yeah. You did. <laughs> Your independence. Yeah, 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 I lost my independence. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, um, you want to get started with this? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. I, I like. I think I recited about half of it last year around this time. <laughs> yeah, um, and it was by memory. At some point, it was just like paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, because I, you know, I just I can't. It's long. Yeah. There's a lot there. Absolutely. But um, mostly, I mean, we can, uh, there's no sense in doing it all at once. I thought we would do it in segments and then talk about them a little bit. Um, but particularly, actually, this time I kind of wanted to go over the various grievances um, and, you know, see if you feel like uh, any of that is worth grieving about now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, here we go. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with one another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. 
So that's just saying, yeah, we're putting an end to this, but it only seems fair that we explain why. Yeah, well, you um, should you should know why. <laughs> yeah. Um, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shewn that mankind are more disposed to suffer, while evils are sufferable, than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. Boy, is that the truth. Yeah. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government, and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. And then they go into it. But we should talk about this paragraph. Absolutely. Um... I mean, first off, you know, there's a whole lot of question about the the slavery thing and, and so forth. And that I mean, that came to my mind as you were going through that. I mean, you kind of can't help to, in this day and age, at least kind of consider that. Yeah. Um, the, the truth is that I think that, I think that these people mostly believe that, like, what's written here. Yeah. Um, that all men are created equal and are all, you know, all are due their liberty. Um, many of the founding fathers that had slaves... Uh, First off, we should probably point out that slavery has had been has been actually I would say a constant in human society since the very beginning. Yeah, this is not a uniquely American thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, um, absolutely, it still goes on today. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, although you know, at least in the case of Libya, you could point to America as a cause, but we're <laughs> yeah. we're we're not doing it. We're just yeah. you know we just toppled a government that that, and, that and, ended up going that direction yeah, afterwards <laughs> and, and left chaos that resulted in open slave markets. But, yeah. um, but no, I, I think that the, the founding fathers for the most part really believed this. Um, or, you know, sometimes your ideology and your actions don't always line up. Yeah. Um, that's true too. Uh, I know that at least a couple of the, the, you know, the major people, uh, Washington and Jefferson, um, that own slave that people point to all the time. Well, these were slave owners. These were slave owners. Um, they were also Virginia residents. Yeah, Virginia had a law at the time that you couldn't release your slaves as long as you had debt. Yeah, um, because they were considered property. Because they were so, assets. You know. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, and both of these men spent. <laughs> yeah. Quite a lot. I, I, there's something for the foundation of your government right there. The founding fathers were deeply in debt, and now we're in a nation that's deeply in debt. But, um. Anyway, uh, I I don't think that it um, I don't think it detracts from what they wrote here. Yeah. Um, no, they, I don't know. think so. Um, I mean, I, I I don't. Yeah, and sometimes sometimes you are um, looking forward to a, an ideal uh, that doesn't exist at the time that yeah that well, you envisioned. You're, it, you're yeah. inserting your today's beliefs into the past. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's also a possibility that they looked at it and that the um, that the slaves were not humans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the I mean, it's, they were it's entirely and possible, and um, I mean, but that's and I, while I vehemently disagree with that belief, that's mm -hmm. not the belief of this time. Yeah, you know, well, and especially at that time, there were plenty of white slaves. Indentured servitude yeah. was a real common way of people finding passage to the new world. Yeah, um, so. But at any rate, um, the yeah, the... You know, I have a real problem with trying to adapt modern times into, into other times. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean, there's, like, you can't expect these people to be perfect. I mean, they weren't. They were living in the time they were living in. Yeah. You know, um, and, and while I, like I say, I don't agree with it, it's, it is the reality, you know. I mean, 
And and they created this wonderful country that we live in that has mm-hmm. turned into everything that it's turned into now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, good and bad. Well, and, and something to point out is that um, originally the line was uh, the unalienable rights among them were life, liberty, and property. Um, but yeah. they changed it to pursuit of happiness because they didn't want to give the impression that, that it was condoning slavery. Yeah. That it, that it was condoning, own, you know, human Owning property. Human property, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but the, I think the, like, probably the most important part of this, and this is, you you know, this is a real change in the idea of what governments are for, um, is that next line that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that it isn't the government that has the power. It's the people that have the power and they, um, they hand some of those powers, they lease Mm -hmm some of those powers to, to government. a government yeah. um, to help organize essentially yeah. um, and to, and to, to keep their rights safe. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was definitely like new in terms of creating a, a nation or, yeah. or setting up a government. Yeah. Um, but I, I particularly like the next part, which is the, uh, when a government get, becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Yeah. Um, and then it's uh, reiterated at the end um, where he says uh, that um, when a long train of abuses uh, events us to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, duty. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> to throw off such government and to provide new guards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can ask me. We're there. Like, <laughs> yeah, I agree, and I think that that becomes more apparent when we start going through their. Yeah, well, I was gonna say once we start going down this list here, it's really gonna become apparent. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you think about a, uh, um, a series of government actions that appears to be designed to reduce the people under absolute despotism, yeah. um, and I would say just think about the last twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can go back farther than that, certainly. Oh, absolutely. But, um, but just since the terror I, war began, I would I would say the last twenty years puts us over the line. Like, mm-hmm. there's plenty wrong with before then, but the last two decades have put us way over the line. We should have been revolting a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just what I think. Yeah, I, I I can't say that I disagree. Well, you want to get into these complaints? Absolutely. Um, now, of course, I, I do want to point out here. Well, you know, no, I'll just point it out when we get to it. Um, he, a lot of this, well, I, we'll break it into parts, I suppose. There's no need to address them one by one. Although yeah. if there's one that really stands out to you, stop. Me. I'll stop you if I okay. need to. Yeah. Um, he has refused to assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable inestimable, that's a tough word to say, inestimable, (laughs) there you go, (laughs) inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. Um, Now this is just uh, leaving, so the the people, you know, believed in in, um, liberty, but under a a government of law, uh, or like a nation of law, like that it it was rooted in law, and, and essentially what he's, what they're talking about at the beginning here is um, that he left them in a position where they either could not make or could not enforce uh, laws to you know protect the people. Yeah. Um, they actually comment later on here um, specifically from the outside. Yeah. Um, so hard to defend themselves from um, you know the indigenous peoples or uh, other nations. There were some issues at the beginning of this country that um, they that you know, they were having trouble defending themselves from Canada. Of course the, yeah. you know, the opposite was true as we talked about a couple of weeks ago with Massachusetts sending a, a <laughs> militia <laughs> into Canada every year to <laughs> get funds for the government. But you know, yeah. um, so it worked both ways, but um, you know, it's essentially an either an unequal or unenforceable law yeah. or um, applied uh not evenly, unevenly, right? Yeah. 
which we're definitely experiencing that kind of thing oh. right now too. Yeah, um, he has called to get together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. That's not really applicable today because you know we all have the it's entire small, world's it's a small knowledge world. on our phone. <laughs> yeah. know, like, the world has gotten smaller. Yeah. Um, but this is a remember this if the world ever collapses and you become in charge. Like this is this <laughs> yeah. is valuable here. Yeah. Um, he has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. I like the idea of the manly firmness. Mm. Um, that makes me laugh. But. Uh, Anyway, um, essentially saying there that when people dissented, he just he just took apart that section of government. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Uh, yeah. You no longer have any power. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do as we say, or I'll dissolve you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise, the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. Now, I actually have a little bit of an issue with this. Yeah. Um, it, it presumes the absolute need for government. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, for political authority. Yeah. And uh, I, I just I just don't you think don't, that that's absolutely that, necessary. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. um, but you know the point remains that uh, you, you have a legislative body that's um, that presumably has been given power to um, to decide for its constituency best courses and so forth. Uh, it dissented with the king. The king took it apart and didn't didn't let anything else take its place. <laughs> right. Um, as yeah. a problem. Yeah. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose obstructing the laws of nat for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. I think it's funny that he they're complaining about not being able to have more immigration. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're complaining about too much. Yeah. Um, and... You know, that's a topic for another podcast, but immigration can only be good, uh, yeah. you know, assuming, well, under uh, private under, practices. Well, yeah, yeah. under, uh, like, yeah. Free when it's market, immigration, under, yeah. under free market capitalism, I would yeah. agree. Like, if, yeah. under socialism, it's a different story. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you and can if make it's your an decision. invasion, it's different, too. Well, right? yeah. yeah, well, that's true, too. <laughs> I, I don't know that that qualifies as immigration exactly, but... yeah. I mean, if, you know, uh, like the Palestinians probably disagree about the immigration <laughs> always being a good thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but no, yeah, it's just, uh, it always raises the total wealth. Yeah. It, and yeah, it just, um, it lowers prices, uh, improves the, the productivity of, uh, of the population. Yeah. Under free market conditions, et cetera. So, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, he has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. Like, you have criminals, you've got nothing to do with them. Like, you can't try them, you can't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. That ought to sound a little bit familiar. <laughs> um <clears throat> he has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He created a lot of bureaucracy. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislators. Um, he has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. No. Yeah. Uh, he has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us for protecting them by a mock trial from the punishment of any murders, which they should commit on the inhabitants of these States. There's more to this, but I actually want to stop at this part uh, uh -huh. here. Cause this is a lot of stuff that, that if you think of in modern terms has gone well beyond what they're complaining about here. Yeah. Um, if you're, he's talking about, you know, large bodies of standing armies. Okay. Well, we're not dealing with troops being quartered in our, in our homes, yeah. but we are dealing with a military establishment that looks into every single bit of private life that we have. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Um, it certainly has the capability to, and I would say is doing that. Oh, there's um, no, yeah. To me, there's no question they're yeah. doing that. Uh, the the surveillance state, the police state that we are now more or less accustomed to, is um, is far more uh, oppressive than than, than the complaints that they had here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, and you know, if you think of uh, the police powers also in in these terms, then then the, you know the bit about um, mock trials and not standing punishment for murders of the people and so forth ought to... Yeah, that, uh, that ought to ring some bells. Yeah. <laughs> um, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, uh, for imposing taxes on us without our consent. All right, so there's another place to stop. Uh, cutting off our trade, like, we cannot independently trade as people here in this country. <laughs> like... Um, it has to have the approval of the government for goods to enter or leave this country. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what they're complaining about here. Well, and I would argue that even with it, with one another, I mean, mm-hmm. the government always gets involved. Like you go buy a vehicle. Yeah. What are you going to pay on that vehicle? Yeah. <laughs> like uh, think of everything you have to do when you buy a car. Well, that's true. Um, um, and essentially what you do is you, you, uh, pay the government for the privilege to use your property. Uh, yeah. Consistently. Consistently, yeah. yeah. Year yeah. after year. Yeah. Um, On yeah. top of the sales tax. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, and that's the taxes. So, uh, you know, the, the popular way of, of the revisionist history of the founding of our nation was that it was a bunch of rich white men who didn't want to pay their taxes. <laughs> yeah, I've Remember, heard you've heard that yeah. so many times. Um, I think the first time I heard it actually was when I was in high school, um, what was the movie about the uh, the kids in the seventies? Last day of school. Um, uh, <laughs> it's just like a little slice of life film. Um, it's got Parker Posey in it, and I, oh well. Anyway, I can't think of the name of it. I went and saw it in the theaters when I was in high school, <laughs> um, which was the mid nineties, early to mid nineties. Uh, and anyway, the on the last day of school, this is what the teachers, the you know, the kind of neo hippie or former former hippie is probably more accurate for that time period. Cause I think it was set in 74 or something. Yeah. Um, teacher is yelling at the kids as they go out the door. Yeah. All right. Uh, now notice this is like the 18th or 19th complaint. Like it is way it's down, pretty the, down list. the list. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's not just for taxing us. It's for taxing us without consent. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's not like a standalone complaint in any way. Yeah. And, uh, there, there's still plenty of complaint about being taxed without consent. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. in fact, there's, there's an assumption of consent just by living here. And I think we've argued that point before, so I'm not going to bring it up again now. Yeah. Um, for depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury. Yeah. Also true today. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, something like 96% of cases is, are settled without a, a jury trial yeah. uh, just because of backlog and threats. Yeah. And the, in our, our, our justice system is couldn't be more jacked up than what it is. Um, I mean, you can't, the reason, and the reason it's so backlogged is because you've got all of these nonviolent offenses that have been prosecuted and it just backs up the system. Honest to goodness, you start you start only prosecuting uh, crimes that have victims. Mm-hmm. You can clear up. I think you'd clear up the justice system pretty yeah. quick as far as backlogs are concerned. Well, and it, I think an important point to throw in here is that uh, the offenses that are most most rigorously um, pursued are those against the state. Yeah, uh, crimes against other people, crimes against property, uh, people and property. Yeah. They're not a priority to the state. Yeah. That's it's very true. clear in the justice system what they're really there to protect. Oh, absolutely. Um, moving on? Yeah. Or, okay. For transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses, uh, there was a lot of them actually, like, mo- I, actually, I would say that this is similar to, um, to trying uh, people like uh, Julian Assange or Edward Snowden or uh, Chelsea Manning and the like yeah. um, in that district uh, in Virginia, just outside of DC that where the, uh, like your jury is always going to be a bunch of people oh. that are connected to the state. <laughs> yeah. Is it the fifth circuit? I can't remember which circuit Something it is, like but that. you know what I'm talking about. I know about. what you're like, talking about though. Yeah. 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 Um, they, they try people in this area where they know they're going to get a conviction because everybody that, 
that would be on a jury pool is, is, is somehow working for or connected to somebody working for the state. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good that I hadn't really considered that, but that's true. Yeah. Um, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. That's them complaining about Canada. <laughs> um, for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments. Uh, for it, well, in, in this case, it would be what the federal government has done over the years, which is usurp the power of the state and local governments. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Is that the one that I just read? No. Uh, for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. Um, actually that seems relevant to a clip that we're going to play later. Um, (laughs) He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting... And actually, like, think about like civil asset forfeiture. And, mm-hmm. uh, and just think about this last year, the government forcibly shutting down business. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. It's oh, a matter of degree. Absolutely. Um, he is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenary, mercenaries not mercenaries, mercenaries, to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. Um, That's not being pointed at us at the moment, but I would say that the U.S. military is involved in such things. Oh, well, absolutely. Um, He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. Uh, This is actually what the War of 1812 was about, too, uh, was impressment, um, when they would capture uh, U.S. ships and impress the sailors into the uh, British um, (laughs) fleets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we ended up fighting another war over this one. (laughs) Yeah, that came up again later. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, he has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. Um, now, uh, inciting domestic insurrection kind of depends on what you believe about, like, January 6th as an example. Um, <laughs> I would argue it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, no agenda. They always talk about the six-week cycle. Yeah. Um, where the FBI uh, dupes somebody into trying something stupid, um, which they then catch him for, and to prove that they they're needed. Yeah, uh, you know, but um, but literally creating terrorist acts where there wouldn't have been any. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Um, so, those are the complaints. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them, I think, are applicable today. Oh. Um, and uh, quite a few of them, I think, are uh, we're in worse position than the the colonies were yeah 200 and almost 50 years ago now yeah no i would absolutely agree yeah um all right in every stage of these oppressions we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury a prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people nor have we been wanting in attentions to our british brethren We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. We must, therefore, acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them, as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace friends. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America and General Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do, in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states. That's important, too. Yeah that they, have, they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. 
and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all the other acts and things which independent states may have right to. And for the support of this declaration, with the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. That last part always gets to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, these people mm-hmm. were signing their own death warrant. They put was, their names on this. I was fixing to say, um, talk about, and that's something that we're lacking a lot of today, yeah. is just just the guts and the bravery to stand up and, and say no. Yeah. You know, like, no, we're not going to live under these conditions anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, do your, come do your worst. Yeah. I mean, cause that's what they were saying. I mean, you know, we're not doing this. You yeah. Know? Um, and of course, you know, war broke out afterwards. They did come do their worst, yeah. you know? Yeah. This is the, um, I'd rather uh, die on my feet than live on my knees. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And there's not enough of that today. Like there's just not, you know, that's part of the reason when we go down these grievances that you're like, yeah, a lot of this stuff is worse now than it mm-hmm. was then. But what are you going to do? You know, I mean, who's going to be the person to stand up and say no more? You yeah. Know? Well, and so, you know, a lot's been said about that these were wealthy people, et cetera. I, actually, I think that this makes it a braver it, act Absolutely. Because they have a whole lot more to because lose. Because these people had, yeah, exactly. They were, um, I mean, they put everything on the line to do what they did. Yeah. It know? wasn't that they had nothing left. Yeah, it and wasn't. It wasn't an act of desperation. No, no. Um, it was, It was. I, like I say, true courage as far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned. Yeah. So. Um. And like I said, the you know important part there is that these colonies w- were meant to be free and independent states, and they were under the Constitution as well. Yeah, the idea that we are a single, a single state now. Well, and that's that's where I think that's where the in bra- the sense of nations. I know? think that's where the bravery comes in today. Is and and that's where the cowardness comes in is from your your particularly your governors of these states. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- that's really where this power, according to these documents, rest. Right is is in the and that's the reason I think we as a libertarian party we need to focus on governorships mm-hmm. and get libertarian governors because that's an area where. Like they could do some of the stuff and show some of that true courage to push back against the federal government. Mm -hmm. And it would, and they would come back, the federal government would come back with their worst. (laughs) Yeah. But their worst for the most part is we're not going to provide you highway funds. Yeah. We're not going to provide you education funds. But remember that the states are providing funds to the federal government as well. So, um, you, you know, you would have to cut off ties both directions. Yeah, it goes back to like this is kind of the power of my idea of um, if the taxation going to the state and from the state to the federal government without the government, the federal government <laughs> getting an accounting of who paid what, who paid what. Yeah, yeah. no, I think um, that's genius, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but if also if it went to the states first before it was passed on to the federal government, it could be not passed on to the federal government. Yeah, you, you could withhold it in that direction as well. Absolutely. And I think that there would be a, a lot of volleys back and forth that way. Mm-hmm. But to, to think that if you were a governor that was spearheading this type of campaign, mm-hmm. to think that you wouldn't have the NSA and all of these groups working against you, and it, it would be oh yeah it, beyond the political repercussions, the, the personal ones would be even more devastating. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, I think that the... Uh it's not just at the at the governor level. Actually, I think the most important position um, to try and fill with somebody who would be willing to stand up to the federal government is uh, county sheriffs. Yeah. Um, no, county that's sheriffs true. Uh, are uh, are actually um, a constitutional office. Yeah. And uh, and they have the authority in those matters that are not specifically um, covered under the constitution. Yeah. No. And uh, so you have people that'll, if you have sheriffs who will, um, who will arrest federal officers that are acting outside of the Constitution in their counties, yeah. like that would make a big difference. Oh, of course, yeah. that would create a huge stink too. Oh but, yeah, <laughs> um, but that would make a huge difference. Oh and, absolutely. And at some point, like you, you reach a level. It doesn't take a. It doesn't take half the country. It, you yeah. know, it only takes a small percentage. I mean, you know, probably 10 yeah. to 15% acting this way to really start pushing 
uh, pushing back in the other direction. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, and I think I think it just takes the the right. You got to get it started. Like I think a lot of this would would gain ground once you had um had had once it got started. Once mm-hmm. you had that governor or that sheriff that really like spark that conversation, I think it would gain ground in our direction. Oh, I, sorry, I grabbed a pen. <laughs> um, no, I agree. Um, now we got, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes left. Uh, uh, you know, usually I would have replayed the clip for you right before we started recording. Yeah, I thought I, about that once we, st- after we had started <laughs> recording, I was like, yeah, I haven't. I mean, I've I heard it originally, but it's been like a. Yeah, it's been a couple of days since I've listened to it, actually, too. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I might add the Second Amendment from the day it was passed limited the type of people who could own a gun and what type of weapon you could own. You couldn't buy a cannon. Those who say the blood of the, the blood of patriots, you know, and all the stuff about how we're going to have to move against the government. Well, the tree of liberty is not water with the blood of patriots. What's happened is that there have never been, if you wanted to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. The point is that there's always been the ability to limit, rationally limit the type of weapon that can be owned and who can own it. Okay, so we all got to listen to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Man, there's so many things to say, but I I almost cut out that middle part oh, where yeah. he messes up the the, the Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson quote <laughs> so badly. Yeah. Um, yeah, he brutalized but, that thing yeah. to the point that I didn't even realize that that was actually what he was quoting. Yeah, like until like the second time because we listened to it twice, and I was like, oh, that is supposed to be a Jefferson <laughs> yeah. quote. I mean, the only part he mentions he's like tree of liberty, blood of patriots, uh, uh, something <laughs> you know, that, all that stuff about yeah. going against the government. Of course, the, the quote is, and I probably don't have it exactly, but it's something like, uh, the tree of liberty uh, from time to time must be watered by the blood of patriots and tyrants. Yeah, yeah. And tyrants yeah. is an important part of that, yeah, though, by the way. <laughs> like, that's the... Anyway, um, there's so many things wrong with what he had to say. Um, first off, let me just read to you the Second Amendment. It says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Okay. So he says... Nothing about not having cannons in there. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's actually a specific point to be addressed, certainly. But um, the main thing I would say is that uh, there's nothing in there about restricting the people at all. Yeah, yeah, because Uh, The only restrictions in the Second Amendment are placed on the government, not on the people. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because he specifically, oh, how did he word it in the beginning? He says uh, it um, always restricted the type of people. Who type could of people own could own weapons. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, there was, there's none of that in there. You're making that one up, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, from the beginning, the type of people who couldn't own a gun were slaves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's not, it's not even specified there. Yeah. Um, the the private ownership of cannons thing, uh, that's just a lie. I mean, yeah. what he says there is just a lie. You couldn't buy a cannon. Bull. Yeah. <laughs> like, you absolutely could buy a cannon. Yeah. Um, there was some case uh, in terms of just like an individual. There was some case in Tennessee, Kentucky, I can't remember where exactly, um, where a guy kept a cannon on his property literally to fend off the local government. <laughs> yeah. um, and it went to court, and he was found that, like it was found that under the Second Amendment, he absolutely could do that. In fact, that was the purpose. That was the purpose, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but the, you know, to to bring it into a more real-world example to just show how wrong, how like what a lie that is, mm-hmm. um, private mercantilism at the time, Still had to worry about pirates. Yeah. They had cannons. There was private ownership of cannons all along the coasts. Yeah. Because they had to defend their property from pirates that the, that the government couldn't defend themselves, defend them from. Yeah. And that's that's really the purpose of the Second Amendment, is it's about being able to defend yourself. Well, and 
what always irritates me with people is they always will say, well, you never could have imagined the type of weapons that would be available now. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is, is the weapons that were available then were the same weapons that were available to the government. Yeah. It was just, it was a more equal playing field then than it is now. Oh, yeah. Um, so to say that, that we should restrict gun access due to that is, uh, is just blasphemy. I mean, that's yeah. not, I mean, the second amendment was written with the idea that at the, at least at that time that the civilians were going to have the same weapons they had. Yeah. The, the idea is that the government isn't above the people. Exactly. The, exactly. It is of, by, and for the people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but you know, that, that's been that lost. Idea is, yeah, yeah. That idea is long, long since gone. Um, and he also, you know, makes this comment about, um, the, you know, you couldn't take on the government anyway, you'd need uh, F 15s and, and nuclear, <laughs> nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. Yeah. Um, you know, tell that to the people of Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> or Vietnam or yeah. anywhere else. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know. I mean, the, uh, the people of Afghanistan with, with little more than rifles um, and improvised explosives have fended off two of the most powerful empires in the history of the world. Yeah. The Soviet Union and the United States of America. Absolutely. Um, they did not need F-15s and they did not need uh, nuclear weapons. And actually, they didn't even need a functioning government. This is a <laughs> bunch of tribes that have banded together. That's, that's not even a single nation, at least the way the people are divided. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, man. So, so. Um, the the thing that I, that really stood out to me, though, in that comment was, it seems to me implicit in that that the government would use nuclear weapons against its own people. Well, he I, I don't have the the quote, but he made another comment after this one, mm -hmm. basically coming out and saying that that, that okay. like yeah, he, twice now he is threatening to use nuclear weapons on the civilians. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's just the scary thing, man. To think that guy's fingers on the switch. I'm just telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody take that football away from him. Right? He's going to fumble. <laughs> yeah, no joke, man. Yeah. We're all going to pay the pay the consequences of that one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this, it's just been, this whole thing's been totally turned upside down. Uh, somewhere along the way, um, the, the government, the people in the government, um, decided that they were above the people that they supposedly serve. Yeah. And, um, and it's just become, it's become more and more obvious. And I think that that's why there's kind of a level of unrest. It, it became even more obvious during this last year under the, the COVID restrictions. Oh, yeah. It's just um, naked now. Uh, especially when you had a whole bunch of situations where, um, people in the government were absolutely flaunting the rules. They're just ignoring the rules that they were place that they were placing on everybody else. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, and, you have have governors that literally at five o'clock were giving out these decrees and then going out that night and like immediately not following them. Like, yeah. I mean, and it's we live in a society where it's not just like, oh, I think I saw something. Mm -hmm. oh, we have you on camera. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and, there are cameras everywhere. And there's yeah, I don't know that there's anything that irritates people more than the idea that somebody thinks that they're better than them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's where we're at here, you know. So even when you are better than that. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> um I mean I don't really have a whole lot more to say about that. I just it, it seems to to fit in with this side, you know, with us coming in um to the fourth of July, um and of course Independence Day today. Yes. Um <laughs> and uh the I I think I think we mentioned a couple of months ago on the podcast when like, does Biden understand the irony of him th threatening to cancel independence day? <laughs> <You Yeah, know? laughs> like, right. um, and mm. I, I don't think that we met everything that they said, but they, yeah, I, I have actually, there are places that are locking back down because of the Delta variant. Because of the, in fact, um, the other night when I was watching the evening news, which I don't catch every night, but I try to catch at least a few times a week, mm -hmm. man, the night I watched it, they were pumping this Delta variant like crazy. Yeah. And they were like openly talking about 
like going back to mask and going back to locking down and all of the stuff and and pushing it hard. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I've heard recommendations that people that people that have been vaccinated wear masks indoors again. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's or out outdoor. I don't know. Anyway, wear masks. They, they were pushing masks even for vaccinated people and the whole nine yards. And I'm telling you, like, I mean, I don't think it's. We'll see what happens. But I think come this fall, there's going to be a very hard push to go back to where we were at. There um, was a huge protest about this in London. Um, uh, oh, I saw that. No, I saw that. There were people in the streets like crazy. Yeah. Um, I saw pictures of it and was was like in awe, like mm-hmm. that there was that many people. And, and I was proud. Like yeah. I was like, man, like what go y'all? Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, people are getting fed up. Um, And I think, I think if, if come this fall when there, cause there's going to be this push this fall. Once the temperature starts dropping and everything, we're going to mm-hmm. go into that season. There's going to be a big push to go back to the mask and the lockdown and all that. I'll be curious to see how this country reacts. Yeah. I just heard Fauci say that we're in trouble. Us, <laughs> su- us Southern States that haven't, oh. not enough of us have been vaccinated. Boy, we're going to pay we're, the piper in the, yep. in the fall. Yeah. Um, of course, he said that about Texas when they opened up, and yeah, and no Florida problems. and yeah. everyone else, yeah. you know. So we'll see. I mean, I, at this point, like the people that I most care about around me um, have done what they think they need to do to protect themselves. So yeah, you know, like my mom's been vaccinated at this point, so well, um, you know, it was important to her, and it, you know, it's a relief for me in in a lot of ways too, because yeah. I have no intention of getting a vaccination. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also don't obviously want to be responsible for bringing anything in. Yeah, absolutely. And like I say, for a lot of people, I think it's the right call. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I do think it's the right call for a lot of people. It's not for me, though. Yeah, not for me either. <laughs> so. Um, hmm. yeah. Anything else? No, I, I think that pretty well does it, man. Uh, I hope everybody has a good Independence Day. Yeah. Be safe. Be smart. Yeah, um, yeah. This keep, is keep this is all my your brothers. fingers and toes. Like, yeah. be careful with the fireworks; they're yeah. fun. I'm gonna enjoy some, but like, fire them... is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yes, treat it with the respect. Use caution. Treat yeah. it with the respect it deserves. Yeah, you know, that's uh, firearms are dangerous. Use caution. Yeah, don't be yeah. firing them in the air. Well, yeah. As much fun as it is, yeah, you're probably you're probably not gonna hurt anything. If you fire them up. Probably so. not. But you know, if you're in the city limits and stuff, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, I, you I, don't want to get arrested. You well, know, yeah, that's that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, yeah. don't you don't want to spend your independence day like that yeah <laughs> not independent at all <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah um so uh, yeah and we'll we plan as always to be back in a week uh in the meantime uh follow us on where do you follow us now okay so you YouTube. follow us on facebook or, or subscribe on youtube my bad yeah subscribe youtube yeah. uh itunes podbean yeah. um follow us on facebook uh, of course, you can follow the the website, thelibertymike.com, and uh, like and share and tell your friends and um, have a, a safe and fun holiday. Um, and, you know, remember what it's all about. So when the cops show up, say, this is none of your business. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got a warrant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Am uh, I being detained? <laughs> and be sure that you always invite a good attorney to your parties. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we'll, uh, we, yeah, we'll, we plan to be back next Thursday or Friday, whenever it works out. Um, and uh, we'll finally get this right then. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.